Is running a pain in the gut for you, literally? Watch on as we discuss what might cause this and how to prevent it. Hey, how's it going? You're watching Iron Will, your place to find tips, tricks, and experience in triathlon, multi-sport, and endurance events and training. There are multiple ways that pain in the gut can present itself. It might be pain or bloating or rumbling or frequent trips to the toilet. And this problem where you have issues with your gut, especially during running, is called runner's gut specifically because in running you are doing a lot of bouncing around. So your gut is doing a lot of bouncing around. So with triathlon, it's, you know, it's not called cycling gut, it's not called swimming gut, because you're not bouncing around nearly as much in those sports. In running, you are bouncing up and down, your gut is bouncing up and down, and that is causing everything to move about. What are some of the things that could cause runner's gut? Well, one of the main things, and one of the things that I have experienced the most over my training, is eating food too much or too soon before your exercise. So this may be, yeah, eating it too much or too soon before the exercise, or certain foods can actually take longer to metabolize, and so they may affect your gut. And also, certain foods may also affect your gut in different ways, such as spices. If you have a very large meal for lunch, which I had a few days ago and then went out for a run later on in the evening, and it was still probably about six hours after I had a meal, but my meal was really big. And when I went for the run, I just had this constant pain in my gut the whole time. And it wouldn't go away no matter what I did. And so depending on the type of food that you eat, you need to wait a certain amount of time after it. And also the amount of food that you eat. So if you are only eating small meals throughout the day, then maybe your time after eating might not be as much. But if you eat a really large meal, then maybe even six hours after eating, your stomach is still really trying to digest that food. And that's where the gut issues start coming about. And there are also certain foods that move slower through the gut. So high fiber, high fat, and high protein foods. So particularly if you're on a ketogenic diet, so ketogenesis or keto diet, which is of course high in fats and proteins and low in carbs, that sort of diet will include a lot of food, which does take a lot longer to digest. And as such, you may find yourself five hours after eating food, and you're still finding gut issues because you're digesting that food. Also, there are a lot of different foods which just cause issues with the gut more commonly than others, such as spicy foods, uh, alcohol, dairy, cruciferous vegetables, and excessive amounts of sugar. So if you're eating foods with those in it, you may just have gut issues afterwards, especially if you're running. Another major problem that does cause gut issues is dehydration. So making sure that you are properly hydrated before your run and also during the run. Whenever I'm going for a race, especially a triathlon, in the days leading up to the race, so from two days out, three days out, I will start loading up my body with electrolytes so that I am fully and properly hydrated on the day. So you can do this too. If you, a couple of days out, you have two liters maybe, the day before you have one liter, the day of you have half a liter or something like that. Just make sure you're loading up on electrolytes before the race and then during your race, you make sure that you continue to have those electrolytes constantly coming in, replenishing all those nutrients that are being taken away from the body by your sweat by the dehydration effect and making sure that you are not dehydrated during your race or practice run. And another one just in regards to drinks that have a high sugar content, be wary of having these before your run. When these go through your digestive system, your gut will then start to suck water from elsewhere to try and compensate for the high sugar content and this will cause sort of an internal dehydration in your body, which then can cause issues with your gut. One of the main drinks that I have when I'm training is little effervescent tablets, which are your electrolyte tablets, but I make sure that I get the ones with absolutely no sugar in them. Therefore, when you put them in your drink, you know that you're not having a lot of sugar. One of the problems with a lot of the electrolytes that you get, say, out of the tubs, all of your Gatorades, Powerades, that sort of thing, is they contain a lot of sugar, which can be great when you're in a race, but 
if you're having too much of it, can cause gut issues. Also, a lot of people have certain food intolerances and these can cause gut issues when you're going for a run. Of course, if you were to have those specific foods, you can expect the same sort of effects as if you had those foods normally. So if you have something like IBS, lactose intolerance, or your celiac or something like that, then definitely avoid the foods which do cause digestive issues, especially before a race. Because all that bouncing around, it'll just exacerbate the issue and make it even worse. Now taking us away from general food for a little bit, there are also certain drugs which may cause problems with your gut, so NSAIDs. That's the anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen, uh, diclofenac, that sort of thing. They can have issues with the gut just in general. So when you're doing a race or when you're doing practice or you're just going for a run, try and avoid those sorts of drugs. If you need to take painkillers, your best bet would probably be Panadol or of course if you're in America then Tylenol. Another reason that a lot of people get gut issues when they're running and having runner's gut is due to anxiety and stress. So if you can try and make yourself as calm as possible before the run, before the race, that will help eliminate sort of the anxiety and stress related gut issues. Uh, some ways to do this is to you know try and take 10 minutes to do some meditation. Also a lot of people recommend taking magnesium tablets so after food before you go to sleep that can help you calm and relax can also help you get to sleep and stay asleep longer as well. There are a whole bunch of ways that you can try and help yourself relax and help yourself be calm to reduce that anxiety and stress. So if you have a big race or big run coming up, it's a really good idea to have a look at that. Another thing that can cause gut issues and gut pain especially is overindulgence in alcohol, especially over a longer period of time. If you have issues with your liver, your liver may actually be a little bit painful, especially when moving. So try and completely eliminate, if possible, or reduce alcohol consumption, especially in the few months leading up to a race, and especially when you're doing long runs regularly. Something big to remember is that what works for one person may not work for everyone else. Remember that you need to practice what you're going to have on your race day in your training. If you start something new on race day or on a big run, you may develop gut issues simply because your gut isn't used to having that. And also some people just react better to certain nutrition than other people. So maybe the GU energy gels might work great for your friend, but maybe wiggle energy gels work better for you. Depends on the consistency, depends on the sugar content, depends on the flavor, depends on a whole bunch of different things. So what you wanna make sure you're doing is that in your practice sessions, in your long, just general runs, practice with the nutrition that you're gonna have on race day. That way you know that what you've used in your practice sessions, if that doesn't cause gut issues, then on race day, it's unlikely to cause gut issues. And you do need to practice using this nutrition when you're running. Of course, taking the nutrition when you're just sitting down at your desk or whatever, that's not an indication of whether or not your body can accept it while you're doing a race you need to actually do race conditions in some way to test whether or not that nutrition is gonna work for you on race day. The bouncing around caused by running exacerbates all the issues with it, so if you're sitting down at your desk, you may feel that it, it's fine, that it tastes kind of gross. But on race day, with all the bouncing around, you need to make sure that it works for you then. And if on the day of the race, they are providing certain nutrition, See if you can get your hands on some of that nutrition for your practice sessions beforehand, especially if you're planning on using that nutrition on race day. So at the moment, I am busy preparing for my marathon, which comes up in two weeks, where I am setting the Guinness World Record title for the fastest marathon run in a Kung Fu uniform. And I am running on behalf of the Run Beyond Project for this marathon, which helps teach students in need goal setting, commitment, resilience, all sorts of things if you, that you need if you want to set a Guinness World Record title. So if you have a spare couple of dollars, please consider donating to this cause. I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can find this. To check out my video about this Guinness World Record title, I'll leave a link up here. If you want swim, bike, run and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.